Good day, everyone. It's Russ Barkley, and I'm back again with another commentary on ADHD. Surprise, surprise. Today, I want to talk about a topic that I raised in last Saturday's research review, in which I briefly discussed a paper that found reduced sense of smell in children with ADHD. And one of my subscribers wrote and said, Russ, would you go into this in more detail? It's the first I've ever heard that that's a problem associated with ADHD. So I decided to take you up on it. And here's a short discussion on why sense of smell might be involved in ADHD, uh, especially in uh, adults with ADHD, but children as well. So let's have a look here. This diagram, which comes to us from Wikipedia, shows the olfactory or sense of smell pathways going into the brain. And you can see in the center of the diagram, that is your sinus or nasal cavity. And the sense receptors for smell are up there, as you can see, toward the top of that cavity. And those connect up into the brain's olfactory bulb. Notice where that bulb sits. It sits just beneath the prefrontal cortex. And we all know that that cortex is implicated in ADHD. Now, if we follow this diagram further, I'm going to move over here and bring up another diagram. This one from Richards on the Brain website. You can see that once the odor is sensed or detected in the olfactory bulb, then it is further processed into the brain, some of which going into parts of the frontal lobe and others going back into parts of the midbrain. And these yellow structures in here are specifically involved in what is called the entorhinal or sense of smell cortex. And it's here where odor discrimination is also being further processed and where odors are likely to be labeled. And that's because of connections from there back into our temporal lobes or our language centers. So it's a rather complex process, but this gives you some idea of why sense of smell might be affected by ADHD, given that ADHD involves problems with the development and the functional connectivity of the frontal and prefrontal cortex specifically with the rest of the brain. Now, you've also probably heard that other disorders like dementia are known to impair sense of smell. Indeed, it's been argued some of the first symptoms of dementia involve a reduced odor detection or sense of smell. And there are several actual tests that you can use to test sense of smell in children and adults. I'll mention those in just a moment. Now, the reason that dementia might be involved in this is uh, because, it, as you know, dementia involves the frontal lobes and their deterioration. We also know that sense of smell is mediated or moderated to some extent by dopamine. Hey, there's another word we've heard a lot about in ADHD. So anything that might alter dopamine might have an impact on the olfactory bulb and the activation of these olfactory or sense of smell pathways in the brain. So do you see the logic here? It makes sense from the standpoint of neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, neurochemistry, about the sense of smell, and also mapping that onto what we know about ADHD, that might lead someone to hypothesize that like dementia, ADHD being a frontal lobe disorder might produce impairments in our sense of smell. Well, that was the logic behind the first study that was ever done on ADHD in adults and their sense of smell. And it was done by myself and Kevin Murphy and Tracy Bush back in 2001. So 24 years ago, I had this hypothesis based on the logic I just gave you that we might find odor identification 
being affected adversely in adults with ADHD. So we went out and we did a study of 105 ADHD adults and we compared them to 64 control adults on a variety of measures of executive functioning. I don't want to go into that, but we also gave them an odor identification test known as the smell identification test. And we found that the ADHD adults were more deficient, that they had lower scores on the odor identification test than did the control adults. So there it is, folks, probably the first paper on this subject from yours truly about 24 years ago. That was followed up in 2011 by a paper by Romy Weiland and others on olfactory and taste gustatory sensitivity in adults with ADHD. In this paper, they compared 12 adults, women with ADHD, to 12 control women, and they included another group of 12 women with bulimia nervosa. And they did that because they thought impulsivity might be a factor in their results. They did not find any differences among these three groups, but hold on a second. The number of subjects in this study is so small that it raises a serious problem with what we call statistical power, which is the ability of a study to actually test the hypothesis and to detect a difference as being significant if that difference is indeed substantial. In other words, how likely is the study to pick up any difference? Well, that's based on the sample size. Larger sample sizes are better at testing the effects that we want to test in our hypotheses compared to very small sample sizes. So in other words, you can wind up getting negative results like this study just because you didn't use enough people and it wasn't large enough, your sample, to pick up what the difference would be that we would hypothesize here. It wouldn't be a very large difference, of course, because unlike dementia, ADHD doesn't involve, doesn't involve this deterioration, progressive deterioration of the frontal lobe. So uh, we can throw this paper out as being informative on the topic because it's just way too small a sample for us to give it any credibility. That is to say, in science, its internal validity is very poor. So up comes another paper published also in 2011, this by Martin Shekelman, and he is also looking at olfactory stimulation in adult ADHD, but they're also going to measure brain activity in these adults with ADHD specifically in the olfactory bulb and its connections into the frontal lobe. And they did that using functional brain imaging measures. And what did they find? Well, first of all, they also did not find any differences between adults with ADHD and control adults. But <laughs> that's because, again, they only used 29 adults in the ADHD group and 29 in the control group. And again, this may simply not be enough of a sample size to pick up what we're looking at here as probably small to moderate differences in odor identification. And telling on this point is the fact that they did find reduced activation in the olfactory bulb and its associated cortex in the adults with ADHD. So while they didn't find any differences on their odor detection tests, they did in the brain regions related to odor processing and identification. And then along comes yet another study, this one published in 2020, that looks at sensory profiles in adults with and without ADHD. Now, this study doesn't test for odor identification. It simply asks the adults to fill out some questionnaires, one of which had to do with sensory profiles. And they found both over and under sensitivity being reported by the adults on that scale. So it goes both ways. 
So what are we seeing so far? We're seeing that on odor identification tests with large enough samples, there's a problem with odor identification. And there's a problem with activation in the brain in those areas that are processing odor detection and identification. But on questionnaires, we may see it going both ways, hyper and hyposensitivity. Next up is a study that was done in 2021. This is on food preferences in adolescents with ADHD. And in this study, they also tested, as you see here, chemo sensation with regard to odor and taste identification. And just as with our study back in 2001, this study of teenagers also found lower scores on the chemosensory tests in the teens with ADHD compared to the control group. So it looks like if you use a large enough sample, this one used 36 teens with ADHD, uh, about half of which, excuse me, had ADHD and half did not, but they picked it up, whereas other studies have not. Still not a very large sample, but the study is finding differences. Now, let's go on and take a look at several studies that looked at the does methylphenidate, excuse me, do the stimulant medications improve or affect in any way sense of smell? Well, here's a paper, uh, and this one was published back in 2011. This one also again by Martin Shekelberg. And again, it's a study of very small samples of individuals. He's going to use 27 children and teens with ADHD, and he's going to look at whether or not methylphenidate affects their odor identification. Well, he found that there were no differences in olfactory sensitivity. And indeed, in those who had never taken medication, they appeared to have heightened sensitivity and that methylphenidate treatment led to no differences after medication use. But once medication was discontinued, there appeared to be an increase in sensitivity. I'm not sure why this makes any sense to me. Uh, I would expect that by increasing dopamine, we would improve olfactory functioning. Uh, so there may be something about discontinuing methylphenidate that has some unusual effects on dopamine briefly and on odor identification. Now we come to the study I talked about last Saturday this one out of Turkey. This is a study that was just published this month, and it's on olfactory detection in children with ADHD and whether or not there is any effect of methylphenidate on the odor detection. The authors reported that there was a difference between the ADHD control and control groups in detecting odors, both sensitive to them discriminating them and labeling them, and that the ADHD group did more poorly. They also found, as we might expect, that once the kids were placed on methylphenidate, their odor identification scores improved on their odor detection test. And by the way, they used a large enough sample of 50 children with ADHD 50 healthy children. So notice the trend that we're seeing here, and that is if the sample sizes are large enough and the study is well powered to detect a difference if it exists, we see it. But if the studies are too small, then we find no differences in odor detection. And as I said, if we use rating scales, we get somewhat different results than that. So uh, there's a nice paper from last week on, on odor detection. Now, finally, I want to bring up a topic here uh, that may have something to do with detecting olfactory problems in ADHD. And as you can see in the title here, it's about acquired brain injuries. This study, which is a review of the literature, not really a study, looked at whether or not traumatic brain injuries affected olfactory identification and functioning. And they looked at not only TBI, but they also looked at other disorders 
such as psychiatric disorders in these reviews. The study points out that there is a reliable connection between traumatic brain injuries and acquired olfactory functioning problems in children. So uh, we have to keep that in mind because as you know, people with ADHD are more prone to accidental injuries and especially concussions and mild to moderate traumatic brain injuries as well. So uh, it could be that some of the odor identification problems that are being picked up in these studies may have to do with history of concussion and TBI. That remains to be examined in further research. So my summary of this is we do seem to see in the best studies that are adequately powered problems with odor detection and identification. We also find that there is underactivity in the olfactory centers in the brain, particularly the olfactory lobe and its processing into the frontal lobe area. We also see that methylphenidate, at least in children, might improve odor identification. Now, if we were to use questionnaires, then we start getting self-reports of both hyper and hyposensitivity in the smell, taste, and other sensory domains. So we're going to put aside the results of these self-reports and go with the more objective measures of odor detection as well as of brain activation. So there you have it. I think there probably is some reason to think that there is impaired sense of smell in people with ADHD. It remains to be shown whether this is due to the ADHD or due to an increased history of traumatic brain injuries such as concussions or both. In other words, ADHD and TBI both adversely affect odor identification. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me for this quick review on olfaction and ADHD. I'll see you later in the week for my usual research review. Until then, as always, live well, be well, and take care. Bye for now.